Warning, not a graphic pest control video. The only thing that was harmed in the making of this video was my wallet. Good afternoon everyone. It's Monday the uh, 25th of May. Bank holiday Monday, uh, just after lunch, about one o'clock. Uh, I'm out on the farm with the new, my new, Dreamline Compact Tactical in 177, sub 12. Uh, if you remember, I had the uh, Dreamline before. I traded that in just before the lockdown at Livens in Burton on Trent for a new um, compact light. I kept the tactical kit from my old gun and swapped it over to this one to make it a tactical and bought the folding stock adapter from Crail in Holland, the standard FX one. Um, Sorry, there's a pair of wood pigeons. I was just off camera. <laughs> um, but obviously now when you buy the tactical one, it comes with a folding stock adapter standard apparently. Um, it's a really good one actually, really high quality adapter. I did have one of the cheap Chinese eBay ones on it before. That's uh, very wobbly. Then the FX one's rock solid. Um, it doesn't come with a moderator. I had um, Matt Windsor of MWSS make me a custom one, just a little four inch one to quiet it down because it has got quite a bark on it. This shroud doesn't really do anything other than hold the liner. Um, doesn't make any difference on the sound suppression. It doesn't seem to anyway. Um, especially in the 177, the, because of the short barrel and the small caliber, the regulator comes factory set to 90 bar which is a bit of a blast. So um, when you've got no silencing on it at all, then um, you do need something on it, really. Um, I'm gonna do a bit of pellet testing on it today. I say I got it on the Saturday and uh, the lockdown happened on the Monday. So um, I've not had a chance to shoot it other than over a chronograph, uh, about 20 shots of a chronograph. When I first got it, cleaned the barrel which you should always do because it was absolutely filthy um, and it was ditched and then I put 20 shots through it to put a bit of lead in the barrel. Uh, quite pleased with it really to be honest. So nice to see the liner system on this one is the same as the Crown um, ultralight or super light barrels where the line is just held in place at this end with like a brass lock nut that compresses a rubber washer rather than the end locking nut on a standard smooth twist X barrel um, which I had problems on my original dream line where it actually compressed the liner and bowed it so I had to get the liner swapped but there's no way of doing that with this system which I'll show you close in a minute uh, so I bought some I've got some heavies in 452 got the new 177 Hades to the same weight as the heavy I've got some Express Diablo and I've got the exacts in 4.53, 5.2, 5.1 and 4.50. So that's seven different pellets to try in it. It's got a full 230 bar fill. Um, it comes with a standard 21 shot magazine, which we all know by now. I'm also going to attach the chrono, the FX chronograph to it to see uh, how it performs over the chrono. So, yeah. See, I'll get on with it. There's a slight breeze, that's why I've just pulled inside the barn to film this. Very, very slight breeze, but I'm going to try and shoot with the breeze behind me so it shouldn't throw the pellets off left or right. Um, I've not zeroed it either yet, so I'll do a couple of zero shots with the Excite. I've got the 4K Excite on it. Um, the reason I bought the uh, I bought a new one is because by the, I did want the compact version for the bull pup and the short barrel, but by the time I'd have bought all the bits and pieces, it was easier just to chop the old one in against the new one. Um, and I brought, the, like I said, I brought the light and swapped the tactical kit over I already had. So it made sense and I get a brand new gun with a three year warranty. So uh, I think it's three years or two years on the FX guns now. So see how we get on with it. I'll speak to you soon. Right, this is the liner system I was telling you about. We just unscrew the shroud. It slides off. 
that's it. Now, ignore these, I put these two bits of tape on just to hold this. It's like a washer, a rubber liner support, uh, shroud support, sorry, it slides up and down the liner. The problem is it's not held in place by anything other than a rubber washer. So when you pull the slide off, uh, pull the uh, shroud off, it can take it with it and end up getting stuck in there, which it did once. So I put a little bit of tape around the liner just to hold it in place. So if you look here, the liner is only held at the breech end with this locking brass nut. And what happens is that brass nut unscrews and in there there's half a dozen rubber washers that are compressed by the brass nut that hold the liner in place. So it's only held at one end, which should hopefully improve accuracy as well. Because it, um, I think there was an issue, especially in FAC, the smooth tip stacks, the line is quite thin and I think it flexes when it shoots and there's been issues with using barrel supports and all sorts on it, on the original gun. So hopefully this system will prove to be a bit more uh, solid and um, more accurate, but we'll soon find out. All right, it's time to get set up and get shooting. Okay, as we start this test, um, I was using my bipod on my shooting mat in the farmyard and shooting through the ATN XI. Um, I'd zeroed using the Hades on that center point, so the Hades and the heavies were shot at the center. Uh, and then on the other tests I use the dot as the aiming point um, obviously because the pellets are lighter they land higher but I will say that conditions weren't perfect uh, I was looking through the X site which was quite whited out really with the reflection of the bright sunlight so you know perhaps a better test would have been to sit it on a bench clamped down which I might do in the future when the range reopens but this gives you a good general idea of accuracy which, and this is basically the conditions you'd be hunting in so it does give a real reflection of hunting conditions but not probably true accuracy although uh, they're all shot under the same conditions uh, but basically they were all um, unweighed unsorted pellets straight from the tin which could have an effect on the accuracy as well That's a one inch group from the Hades, not particularly impressive at 30 yards. The conditions weren't perfect, but would have expected a little better. Still, on to the next one. Now we're on to my favorite pellet, which I always used on the rabbits, um, which is the JSB heavies. One thing I will say is I'm particularly pleased uh, with the performance of the gun consistency wise it sat on my shelf at home for about seven weeks with a full 230 bar charge and didn't lose a single bar and also um, it's preset out of the box with the hammer on max uh, tension and the regulator at 90 bar and how I'm shooting it now is exactly how it came out of the box I've not touched any settings on it whatsoever uh, took it out of the box cleaned the barrel put 20 shots through it and now I'm shooting it here That's a much better group from the heavies, which were my preferred pellet anyway, to be honest. Um, that last shot seemed to drop the feet per second low and average the spread at 18, which is a bit higher than what I expected, but not too bad at all, really, the group.
the 4.50 seem to be better in my old Dreamline, but there's two or three flyers on this group, whether that's the wind or the conditions. But not bad really, probably a half inch on the main group there. Again, 4.51's a bit of a spread. Not bad. Not brilliant, but not bad really. Starting to look like this gun prefers 4.52 because that's not a bad group there. There's one just slightly outside, but that's got to be a half inch group apart from the one. So, quite happy with that. Again, other than the uh, couple of outsiders, which could be the wind, another tight group. Seems like the larger 
size pellets work better than the smaller ones in this gun. Screen recording function works brilliant on the iPhone until you get a text message off your daughter wanting you to show you how uh, jawbreakers are made and obviously in this time of great need and suffering it's a very important thing to want to know. Thanks Tilly. Apart from that last one ruining it, that was a really, really nice group actually from the Express. Not a pellet I'd normally use uh, due to it being light, but target wise, it should be a great, uh, great pellet to use. Okay, for me, this proves my theory that the Heavies is probably one of the best 177 pellets there is still. Um, that last shot perhaps could have been a slightly heavier one as they were out of the tin, unweighed. Um, that could have just thrown the figures out but accuracy wise that's a sort of half inch group uh, not in the best of conditions which for me is perfectly fine at 30 yards um, so I'll probably be sticking to using the heavies in this gun in 452 hopefully you found that interesting and maybe helped you out a little bit if you're thinking of getting one of these guns or you've already got one and you don't want to waste your money on loads of tins of pellets to try Okay, hopefully you enjoyed that, and uh, like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.